start to record. Okay, there we go. Uh, and of course, here is the mainframe, right? Now, most of this we could do as we normally would, right? We could just do some painting on this, uh, do a metal for this if we want to. Uh, we'll probably have this be a metal as well. Uh, so remember, you can actually uh, really just kind of create that fully if you want to, like just uh, give it some metal roughness for the whole thing. In this case, we want it all to be metal. Um, so uh, that'll be pretty easy. Uh, now, in this case, you know, I'm in the texture paint um, uh, workspace. Uh, and you, remember, we have our actual uh, two views here, right? Now, the nice thing is you can always grab this and move it over. So if you really want to maximize your uh, 3D painting viewport, you can do that. And then if you want to kind of maximize this one, it's pretty easy to kind of uh, uh, just grab that little uh, divider in the mi uh, middle and move it around to get you more or less space, right? Um, and for right now, I'm going to give this a good start here. Um, so remember, uh, we're right here at the point where we have to create a texture for this, right? Uh, so what we can do is we can go to the little kind of red uh, ball down here, right, in our properties area, properties menu. Click on that. And we can see that there's already this one material on here. You can always create multiple materials if you need to for different objects, right? Um, in this case, I'm just going to uh, – actually, I'm going to delete that because we were – Good. Let's see. Um, let's go regular material. Remember, you can change the name of the default material, right? So we have that default material on there. I can change the name of it. Call this mainframe. All right. There we go. Um, and now we have that on there. And of course, I want to create a color map, right? Uh, so right here, mainframe, and it's already that principled uh, uh, BSD, uh, BSD, uh, BSDF material. Um, so we just go to base color, click on the little yellow dot, and it brings these up. And there's lots of little things you can plug in there, and we'll kind of discuss some of these things a little more as we go on. Um, but for right now, everything's kind of really image-based stuff, right? We're still trying to focus a lot on image-based texturing. Uh, so we go to the texture column, right? And we go to image texture, because that's going to give us the ability to either open an existing texture we already have. We saw that with the room itself, right? We just we use tile-level textures. But in this case, we want to paint our own new one. So we click on the new button. Uh, you can give it a name here, so we can call it, uh, um, you know, mainframe color or something like that. We also give it a resolution. Um, remember, there is kind of these factors, and this kind of thing you could kind of look up if you want to, but it's uh, the scale by like twos, right? Factor of two. Uh, so you can have a 512 by 512. You can have a 1024 by 1024. You can have a 2048 by 2048. 4096, uh, 4096. Uh, generally, though, you want them to be uh, squares, right? So, uh, you know, same resolution by same resolution. Um, and you can see we can kind of do that right there. Now, remember, if you have your, um, and we'll just keep it, uh, all the rest of the defaults blank as the generator type. So we'll hit there, hit OK, 2040 by 2048. Um, if you have a, a better computer, this computer is better, mine's a better at home, you can easily go 4096s. Um, I'm just trying to kind of maybe give you guys a good middle ground of something that, uh, depending on your device, won't ruin it. <laughs> Not ruin it, but, you know, like won't be unstable or won't have as big a performance hits, right? So now we've got a, a, a texture on it, right? Uh, remember, one of the things you can do if you want to double check is, particularly if you have that text tools add on, right? Remember, remember you can click on this little, that little V coming out here right next to the magnifying glass. It's like that one right there. And that brings up these, and there's one of them is text tools. And remember, you could just go here and you could check the presets, right? These are the resolution presets we're talking about 1024 by 1024, or 2040 by 2048. Um, these will be used for your uh, preview textures or your baking, right? That right there. but. By default, they don't really have a uh, presets uh, for creating new textures in uh, Blender. You just have to kind of type in the number you want. Um, once you've done this enough, though, you'll have those numbers memorized. Um, like I, I, I have them totally memorized. But if you kind of don't, if you have the text tools add on installed, which you guys should, you're just going to go right up here to the very top of text tools and just kind of see what those presets are, right? Uh, if you want to close this down, remember you can always just left click drag on kind of the outer part, just move it in, and then close it down. That's that little V, right? Now at this point, um, I do want to give this a decent base color. So I've got the color map plugged in here, and that's why we kind of go down to the little blue, uh, the little red um, sphere there, right? Because these red ones down here are for textures and materials. Now I'm going to go right back up to the top of our property editor because that's that wrench and screwdriver, right? That wrench and screwdriver. That, that was your, basically your properties for whatever brush or tool you're on, right? So remember, this is really your property editor. Tool properties, a lot of the stuff is your rendering and uh, properties here. Um, you got some of your modifier properties, light or curve properties, material texture properties. Um, so remember, this is really just your property editors and just do different property controls uh, and stuff like that. But we're in our texture properties here. There's the mainframe color. 
Uh, remember, you could pick uh, your brush. So if I go to, like, say, fill bucket here, right, it selects it both in these areas. And I could pick whatever color I want. And in this case, I think we're going to kind of go just with the gray. So remember, you can just grab that little slider on the side down here and turn it to gray. And remember, you could just do fill bucket straight in this view. In particular, if you're in paint mode, which I am in paint mode. Uh, let me make sure the object's selected, though. There we go. Paint bucket. Uh, go to 8, because that's your texture view. There we go. Oh, yeah, the texture wasn't selected here. Remember, you have to pick your texture there. Sometimes I forget that. I'm so used to B-Painter automating some of this stuff for me, <laughs> right? Um, so remember, uh, in this view in particular, you need to make sure to pick the texture, right? Uh, just like you kind of pick it here. And now we'll see with that fill bucket, we should be able to just click on it, and it's gray, right? And I like doing it here because it fills the whole texture, not just the geometry, right? If you do it here, it's just going to fill the... Uh, the um, UV polygon area, and you'll see that the rest of it might still be black or not flood painted. Um, so I always like to do fill in the actual 2D paint view. You do want paint on here though, right? That is important, right? Um, you won't get your painting options if you don't have paint available there, right? So just keep that in mind, right? A little bit of painting there. All right. Now at this point, we could always uh, do some stuff with the metals. If I want to, I can go back to my... Um, Material property, right? There we go, a little red sphere. I'm going to scroll down, and we're going to turn metallic up on this. Now, remember, you do want to make sure to switch to your uh, material preview uh, shader, right? Because there's wireframe, there's sh regular shaded, and then this one is your material preview, right? And, of course, you can go in here, and you can make sure scene lights are on. Um, in this case, I haven't really done much with those, so we can leave that off for the moment. Um, but basically, now you see where that metal starts to show up there a little bit, right? And we could turn the metalness up more. Uh, remember, the roughness can make that look more and more chrome or more and more like a brushed metal, right? So it's kind of up to you. I think that'll kind of be good for us, right? So we can get a nice little metalness without even doing textures, right? We've seen that we could actually paint uh, roughness uh, materials, right? And that that ends up being uh, pretty darn cool for making those little adjustments. Uh, so remember, you can actually do a lot of these things without plugging textures in, right? They're really just, uh, you're using textures to control that at the pixel level. So we can get some metalness if we want metalness everywhere, and we basically want it to be the same roughness, which on the mainframe I think is fine. You know, we just turn that metallic property up more or less, and we can, of course, control the roughness to give us, you know, kind of that... Uh, um, more chrome or more brush metal look. And I think more brush metal look is kind of what I'm good with on this one, right? Um, so that's going to give us that. Now, of course, we could do some color map painting if we wanted to. And in this case, you can notice I'm kind of really just um, basically uh, uh, giving us just some color right there, right? Uh, or uh, a metalness. Now, if we want to do color, we can, of course, do um, our color painting. Uh, we could also do a uh, bump map uh, if we wanted to as well, right? It uh, depends on um, what we want to do with this, how much we want that to kind of stick out a little bit, right? Um, in this case, I think our color is good. I think I might want to explore um, a, a bump map on its own. But uh, one of the things I did briefly want to show you a little bit is that we can uh, do 2D painting, right? Um, and we could do 2D painting for color. We could do it for the bump map itself. Um, in this case, I think I might even, I think we'll come back to bump mapping later, maybe uh, show a little bit tomorrow on this. Um, uh, I really just want to get you guys doing 2D texture painting, all right? Uh, so what I want to do is I want to do some painting on this guy, right? And there's a couple of ways we could do that. One is we could, of course, uh, do stencil painting on this guy to give it a little bit of noise if we wanted to. Uh, we could even actually uh, plug in different map types with non-stencil brushes. But the biggest thing, and I want to get this out of the way first, is the 2D painting, right? Uh, so I'm going to click on, um, I'm going to go to 3 for face mode, Control A to select all. Um, and we should be able to see this on here. Uh, remember, if you go to image, you probably want to save, right? Uh, just so you can save your color map. Right, so mainframe color. Uh, also, a good idea to do a file external data automatically pack into Blender file. That way, these will, um, textures will save with your Blender files. Right? I should be able to see my UV in here. Why we're not seeing it? Uh, let's see UV editing. 
Um, so you can kind of see that those are where those um, those are at. I'm not sure why we're not seeing that in there. There we go. Um, sometimes you might need to go back to UV Editor just to kind of make sure that that's showing up properly. Um, kind of one of those little things that you have to be aware of, right? And you notice that can actually turn it off and on too, right? It's by going to text UV editing, I turn that on. So right there, I can turn it on. And then we can see your UVs in your paint area, right? Uh, so keep that in mind, right? Even with your uh, selection off, uh, but you'll notice kind of it does kind of go there, right? You have to kind of be a little bit aware of that, right? Let's go to three, control A. Come on, that should show it. What's going on there? Ugh. It's being a little silly. So you might have to go back and forth just to kind of get it to properly show that. Um, but in this case, I want to paint kind of this linear texture along these guys, right? And really, you could see that in our 2D area, we can see this properly, right? If I was to paint this two, uh, three dimensionally, it's not going to work well for us, right? So if I go to say our, our draw brush, right? And then we go to um, our texture menu here, right? Because we've seen this before. Uh, we can go new, right? Now create a new texture. You want to go down to the little uh, texture guy right here, right? It's that little uh, red checkerboard. And the new textures here. I can go to open. And this is where I'm gonna, just going to go to desktop. And I'm going to find, I think, my lines JPEG. And you notice it's just a series of lines, right? Of horizontal or vertical lines. So that's now loaded in, of course. And what I could do is uh, go to texture here, uh, make sure to select it, right? So if you go to this little texture pull down, right, you can click on this little bar right here, and that actually shows you all the textures you've loaded in. So you can keep creating new textures from here, right? So you're going here, you can keep creating new textures, you can keep uh, loading them in, right? Um, you can always create the new ones from here as well. And they'll just end up showing up in here, and you can select to browse them, right? Um, a little bit clunky. Uh, this is one of the things that BPainter offers. It's great as you have actually have these browsers built in so you can look through all your textures uh, without having to load them in. Very cool. Um, but stock, it's one of kind of those areas Blender can be a little bit better at. All right. Um, but now that texture is loaded. Uh, and of course, we're going to go to uh, stencil, right? So remember, there's a mapping type, stencil. And we can now see the line texture showing up here, right? Now, remember, shift or uh, just right mouse button moves it. Shift right mouse button will scale it. And if you kind of do your scale at the edges, it's actually more controllable. At the center, it kind of it can get a little touchy. So I tend to go to the edges um, to get the response better. That's shift right mouse button to scale it. And then, of course, shift rotate is uh, sh control right mouse. So it's all right mouse button, right? Right mouse button for move. Control right mouse button for rotate. Shift right mouse button for zoom. Um, you'll notice, though, that your alt for your regular zoom won't work. So you might use scroll wheel just for zooming on this one. You can change the quick keys for this, but um, Consider we lost a week to technical issues. Um, we're not going to worry about that. Just kind of use the scroll wheel to zoom in your viewport here. Now, what happens if I try to paint, right? Even if I'm rotating, like control rotate, control right mouse button rotate, right? I want to try to paint this on this pipe or hose. That does not look like it's going to go on terribly well for us, does it? Right? It's getting distorted. It's painting weird. Um, it's just not lining up properly at all, right? So this is one of those things we have to be very, very aware of when we're painting is that 2D painting for this kind of stuff, and when you have a highly, highly geometric texture, right? Highly geometric texture, um, that it's not going to paint on well in 3D, right? If it's these exact lines, if you have a bunch of repeating hexagons, anything that's a highly repetitive, highly geometric texture, 3D projection painting is not going to work terribly well, particularly if it's something that's got a lot of curvature like a hose. So you'll notice that if I move my cursor over the UV editor, you'll notice that the UV editor can, of course, also have this in here as well. And so what I could easily do is rotate that, shift scale down. And of course, remember, we can go back up to the brush uh, uh, wrench and screwdriver properties up here. And you'll see that you can um, Go into texture here, and you notice how you can actually adjust the angle and sizes. So you have controls here if you want to. So we can set that kind of back to zero, right? So remember, uh, if you go into these little areas, um, even texture here, because that's, that's that same control that gives you stencil and all that stuff here, you can actually control those numeric properties. And you'll notice that if I zoom in here, 
and right mouse button is to move it up. And I might need to tile it a little bit. Uh, maybe shift to scale it. I probably can use it large. You'll notice that you can actually paint these things right in the 2D area here. So you'll notice that this stuff can actually be two-dimensionally painted here. This is one of the reasons why we also rectified it, right? And I can always repaint over some of the areas that get a little too far out there, right? I'm just kind of trying to lay this down. And in this case, you can actually see it's going vertical, uh, which actually is okay if you want it to go horizontal. It really shouldn't go vertical for that one, though. It's a bit weird. Um, let's go to, let's paint these first, though. I actually should go on differently. Uh, that might just be a texture glitch. I notice sometimes when you're doing painting in here, it gets a little weird. Um, but you notice you can come in here and you can actually paint uh, these textures two-dimensionally, right? And this really does give you kind of the ability to um, really kind of paint this in a much more precise way. So this kind of texturing with two-dimensional texturing, really, really useful, right? Uh, I'm going to maybe go back to UV editing, then back to texture paint. Okay, that's that's really not showing up the way I wanted it to. That should not be looking like that. That is weird why that's doing that. Um, go to four. Back to this here. Okay. That is bizarre. Oh, yeah, it's because they're on top of each other. Uh, those UVs are on top of each other. That really shouldn't be doing that. I'll have to look into fixing that. So in this case, maybe um, not have those on top of each other, but I had these same UVs on top. But that's what it should look like when you paint it, right? And you'll notice that 2D does this really, really well, right? You guys can, of course, uh, do it better than I am doing it, right? Because um, you have the time and you're not trying to condense it all into a 20-minute lecture. Um, you can always repaint areas out, like where it's kind of overlapping too much or be more careful than I am. But this, I wanted to kind of give you guys a proof of concept, right, um, on this stuff, right? I really wanted to make sure to show you guys that um, 2D texture painting offers you this ability to do this easily, right? So that's kind of the idea behind this was that, one, you can actually do all of your normal painting in here, including stencils. Two, that this kind of texturing is much better done two-dimensionally, right? So if you really want a highly repetitive, like, strip like this, 2D painting is going to be your answer, right? 3D projection painting is great, uh, but 2D painting tends to be um, better at doing this stuff, right? Uh, in this case, I think, um, let me get, grab these guys. I think we might need to do a flip of UVs just on these ones. I don't think the mirror is still on. Oh, that might have been a two. Let me apply the mirror. Apply all. Oh, yeah, I think that kind of... I think that screwed me up a little bit. Uh, I'm going to get rid of that mirror because sometimes that'll actually do uh, weird duplication processes. Yeah, that's what it was. All right. Uh, so in this case, um, remember, you have to uh, really kind of go back to your full object, do your normal mirror. Otherwise, it's going to have overlap, right? That's what's happening is there, were, there was full overlap. There we go. Um, I combined the objects, right? when one of them still had a mirror modifier on it. So remember, you really have to apply those modifiers. So there we go. I actually had um, two pipes on one of the sides, and that's what was screwing it up. So there were like two here and one there. And now you see it's actually behaving itself normally. So remember, just apply your modifier, right? Um, I forgot to, before I joined it, this still had a mirror modifier on, and um, this one didn't. And so it kind of, um, or it, yeah, it didn't. So it kind of, when it mirrored, it mirrored this over to there again. So I had kind of like duplicates. They're kind of intersecting and overlapping each other. So there we go. Uh, so just be careful with that. Uh, but that's what it should work like. And kind of neat, right? So really, this is what I want to show you guys was, was 2D painting on this, right? Um, you have that ability to do 2D painting. And for something like this, it's going to be super, super useful, right? Uh, of course, if we want to, we can come back in here and um, hit 8, right, for texture paint. Um, and I could easily minimize this again. There we go. And we can go back to texture. And if you click on the X, the texture is still loaded in, but it's not using it anymore. And you could switch back to, like, say, view plane for your texture. And then you're kind of back to normal texturing. Your navigation will work the same. Uh, if I want to, I can go back to the brush here. 
Uh, we're in paintbrush. Um, and remember, if you click on the color palette here, here's your color sampler. And I can just sample that gray color again. And I can just go back in here. And remember, you can just kind of paint some of this out. Now, keep in mind that this was sampling the color in the viewport here. I always forget that I'm so used to using B Painter. <laughs> um, sample this color, right? That'll be the proper color. This is actually getting you some of your shading color. Uh, so you probably want to sample your 2D area to get you that proper gray. Uh, but remember, there is an eyedropper in there. And you see how you can kind of go back in there and paint out any areas where you maybe did a little excess, right? So uh, probably be a little more careful than I was with that stuff, right? But the idea was that I wanted to make sure that you guys know that if you want to get some nice corrugated texture piping here, um, 3D projection painting with stencil is not going to work, right? Technically, you use procedural textures if you wanted to, but I really wanted to get you guys to see 2D painting. You guys can use every one of your tools in here for texture uh, 2D painting. So believe it or not, sometimes 2D painting is the better choice. Usually it's 3D projection painting, but sometimes 2D painting is a better choice. And if you start to build yourself up a, a bunch of cool uh, two-dimensional patterns like these, you can avoid using procedural textures in a, in, in a way. Because Blender's stock procedural textures aren't bad, but um, they, there could be more, right? This is definitely one of the things you could do with procedural textures, but I really want to get you guys to see 2D painting. So remember, you can actually paint in here, right? And you can even use your stencils in here. And if you find yourself a nice kind of just linear, clean kind of black and white texture, it'll make it pretty easy to get this kind of corrugated effect. Uh, and so that's what I wanted to get you guys to see. And of course, you know, a little bit of problem solving sometimes happens. Remember, you probably want to go to image here, just uh, save or save all images. Um, Control S to save our viewport. And then I'll uh, stop recording.